We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, limited availability remains in Belfast at ulsterhall.co.uk. That's ulsterhall.co.uk. I'm actually going to suggest that Michael O'Loughlin is Ireland's unluckiest criminal, <laughs> right, for many, yeah. many reasons. And we'll go into it. But he has just pleaded guilty and been sentenced after an Encrochat case in the North. Yeah. Now, this is the fourth, I think, guilty plea on Encrochat evidence. Yeah. And it's interesting because it means that in the north of Ireland in the courts, this evidence has not been yet challenged. Yeah. So it's not been tested as such. No. In the UK, there was a number of um, legal cases, challenges taken against uh, the EncroChat evidence, and it was largely based on how it was Yeah, I mean, there's really, yeah, there's really complicated bits to it, whether it was like they hacked into the system or intercepted it, like the British law allows interceptions where yeah. you can record somebody, bug somebody, for example, or record their... With a warrant. Yeah, with a warrant, you can, like the police can. The same as us. Yeah, yeah. the same as us, but there was the, where do you hack in and take this uh, historical information was, that was a big dispute, but that was settled in the courts that the police were entitled to take. It was basically to cut out the legalese yeah. decided by the judges that this was in the public interest, wasn't it? It was decided that it was in the public interest and because of the nature of the phones, the fact that they were deliberately uh, encrypted and that the information was stored on there, it, it qualifies as being intercepted. And that was the biggest legal challenge to the, to to the, the Anchor Chats. Chats. Yeah. So, the NCA, I think, have been leaders in taking down big organised crime groups and using the EncroChat evidence to do so. Um, they have gone after the kind of the big guys, the ones that maybe years and years of investigations didn't let them near because they were so hands off. Yeah. And they have got hundreds of people before the courts. There's been so many guilty pleas that it's hard to keep up with them. Yeah. Huge amount of activity around the Liverpool area, which of course is one of the key drug hubs in Europe. Um, it's as big, they say, Liverpool as Amsterdam as a kind of a drug supermarket. Yeah. I suppose it's the drug supermarket in of entry into the UK and Ireland really. Because, yeah, because of the ports for uh, would be play a factor, Liverpool port being such a big location. But in the north, while the laws are well, it's a similar, it's slightly a different legal system, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a different jurisdiction, I suppose, um, a different legal jurisdiction. However, obviously decisions that are made in, in, in a court in England are going to be taken into consideration, but they're not obliged to follow it. That's my understanding of it now, maybe slightly imperfect. But, you know, if a decision is made in, in, in a court in, in London or in Liverpool, that's going to be presented in the Northern Irish court, but they don't have to follow it as a uh -huh. precedent. But it's, you know, if it's... It would certainly be an indication that you know you're you're fighting against a, against the current if there's that judgment is there. So those judgments, there was there was appeals against the Anchor Chat. There was certainly a lot of fear at the time that some of these appeals about how how and and what information was intercepted that that would fail in the courts. Obviously, the Irish uh, police, not to get into that took the decision that 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 wasn't going to stand up in court, that, that information. But it did stand up in England. And now we're coming back to the north and we're seeing these, uh, Michael O'Loughlin, for example, pleading guilty mm. and deciding to plead guilty at a relatively early stage. Well, I suppose we do need to get into it a little bit because we have three different jurisdictions, we have three yep. different police forces and we have three different ways everything was handled. So the UK and the north appeared to have been very active yep. in regard to this hacked information they were getting. And it was between a period from about April to June of 2020 yep. when the French police discovered the server of EncroChat, the communications tool system of use amongst organised crime groups, and the Dutch helped them hack. That's as much as we know. The yep. details of it are a little bit sketchy. The criminal fraternity are totally convinced they were handed it. Yeah. There's, you know, there's all sorts of rumours going around about exactly what has happened. But one way or another, the between them, the French and the Dutch police were able to listen live and they set up a system where they then passed on the rel relevant information to the different jurisdictions. Yep. 
In cases where there was a, 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 a live threat to life, essentially, yeah. where there was a hit team about to go out and murder, I think in all cases, and we'd have to say the Garda Siakona didn't allow yeah. murder happen, they would have moved in while the hack was live and hoped to God that nobody sussed that their information was coming off these phones because yeah. nobody believed these phones could ever have been hacked. Yeah. They were supposed to be totally impenetrable. But other than that, they collected information they identified stash houses of drugs gangs. They identified where guns were kept. They kept and stored messages, text messages sent between these phones, identified who was using the certain handles because there was all sorts of crazy names. Um, and they identified them through sometimes photographs that were sent, whatever. And they've used both in in many cases when they when they when they did move, which was in June when the hack was finally sort of revealed. They moved in on stash houses. They physically caught drugs. They yep. physically caught people with guns and they brought them before the courts on that. Yep. In other cases, they've used the text messages as the evidence against people. And in the case of Michael O'Loughlin, I think there was some drugs found in a property he was in, but namely the biggest charge for conspiring to murder a man came from text messages. Yes, and it was one of the... Uh, the North broke the mould, I suppose, because they were the first to bring people before the courts. And and when they're questioned in court in this initial charge, they said it came from anchor chat. So I think that was the first mention of it, wasn't it, across oh, Europe? Oh, it was. And Michael O'Loughlin was one of those, those first people that was brought to court. He was ultimately now, he's been convicted of, is it a conspiracy to, mur conspiracy to murder? Murder and uh, I think... Was there 40 charges there in There was 40 charges in total. It was also conspiracy to to import and supply cocaine, heroin, ecstasy and cannabis. And it was also money laundering charges in regards to two sums, 265,000 and 25,000. But I think they acted on the conspiracy to murder charge and that that then they they went to court. Chat was mentioned and that became you know, then the secret was out in, in public. Um, the conspiracy to murder charge, I think they don't, they didn't even, they've, the evidence of that is solely the texts that Michael O'Loughlin had in regards to another man and they didn't even have to produce the name of the person who he was conspiring to murder. So Michael O'Loughlin um, was jailed for six years while well, he was given a, a a 12-year sentence, but he'll serve six years in total for a range of these offences because of his early guilty plea. So Michael O'Loughlin, and of course, just briefly going back into the North, yes, the, the PSNI have brought people before the courts directly related to these Encro chat messages, right? Mm. The NCA are bringing people mm. towards the courts. The Garda Shikona have brought nobody before the courts yeah. directly relating to these uh Encro chat messages, they have certainly in the background used the intelligence they garnered of it. And we can see that in certain cases, we can identify where that happened, in particular during the period of time, which was the March 2020, sort of the end of March 2020 to the June 2020, certain cocaine seizures, seizures were found. Yeah. And, and, and other people who were caught sort of actively committing a crime. I think we can we can ascertain that they were that information was coming yeah. from Angra Chat. Okay. But Michael O'Loughlin, as you say, has pleaded guilty. Now he is the the fourth individual in the North to plead guilty. The first was Samuel McKay, who got three years. He was caught using an encrypted chat network and he was uh, a money launderer who was basically the court heard using this, this uh, Encro chat to hide his crimes. And he was sentenced at Lagan's side Crown Court in May of 2022. Half his sentence will be served in custody and the other half on licence. There was some evidence, I think, given that um, he was arrested and made some admissions in a in a police station. Uh, the next was a guy called Patrick O'Connor. Now, I actually attended this hearing on uh, remotely, but Patrick O'Connor was um, also, I think he was originally from the South. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right in that? Well, he, he certainly had dealings with gangs in the South. He had he, dealings he, with Barry Young. The, yeah, he was from across the border. Maybe he was from yeah. Donegal, maybe perhaps, yeah. or, or whatever. Or he's described as, they're described as a dairy couple, both himself and his wife, Misha O'Connor. The court had heard that they, they pleaded guilty to drugs and proceeds of crime offences. And they 
court had heard that they spent 450,000 on Rolex watches uh, and jewellery, 150,000 on holidays to Dubai, Mexico, Las Vegas and Madrid and that they were nabbed through this this EncroChat hack. Um, now, he his handle was real feet. And there was interesting um, evidence heard during his sentencing. But yeah, he got that. And then there was finally there was a Liam Donaghy who had guilty pleas as well. He was a sort of a small time criminal, I think. So Michael O'Loughlin was going to be the big test case if he pleaded not guilty. Yeah. It was going to be, he was obviously going to, you know, it was there was there was eyes on this case to see yeah. was this case going to be defended and if so how yeah. and was there going to be some uh, some challenges to the way this encro chat yeah. information was used by the PSNI because he effectively wasn't caught red handed with much mm. um, so that was being and it's certainly in the conspiracy to murder yeah I mean the 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 individual he was only basically talking about murdering somebody but exactly. he hadn't actually even made a plan no. and the individual concerned was simply referred to as Johnny they yeah. never even identified who he was exactly so the, it, it's it, it's unusual if you think about it because n- normally in in conspiracy to murder. Cases. A plan. You'd have to show there's a plan. You'd have to show how they attempted to target this guy. You know, the, if if you look at some of the ones in the in in the Hutchkinahan feud where there was tracking devices and all that evidence goes forward. But of yeah. course, Michael O'Loughlin didn't defend it. He pled guilty to it, and you can see why he pled guilty to it as well. I mean, he's already on remand. I think for three years, um, or even four years, nearly at this point. Um, and in total, he's been given a twelve-year sentence. But that's automatically goes to six years. It's six years on license, six years behind bars. He will be out in two years time mm. um, and he is obviously and it, it was even said in court by the judge that he was given a significant reduction because of his guilty plea that he would have been looking at a 18 year sentence for some of these offences so you can see that 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 is what is put to these guys I presume on some level you know you, there, you might fight it you might win but it's going to add, it's going to... Don't win. It, it's, it's a worst gonna, case scenario yeah, for you. Yeah. If, if you plead guilty here now, mm-hmm. he will be out. Michael O'Loughlin will be out on the streets again within two years. So now Tell me why Michael O'Loughlin and I described him as one of Ireland's unluckiest criminals. Well, because he's in this test case now in EncroChat. Um, you know, it's going to make some, it's, it's actually, I was Googling it and there's a bit of, you know, it's, it's a historical case because of because of how Anchor Chat has come to pass. But it's not the first time he's made legal history. Um, he made legal history in 2012 when Michael and his brother Eddie were the first two people in the Irish state to be convicted under the new anti-gangland laws that we have seen used so much in recent times. Um, he was convicted of membership of a criminal organisation. He got a nine years sentence originally and that was reduced to six. And it was legal history. Um, it wasn't just that that charge. There was also, um, the, the, the police, the Gardaí recorded, um, put bugged... Bugs in the cars, put yeah. Put bugs in the cars of the two, the two O'Loughlin brothers and recorded over 110 days. And it had never happened before. Mm. And nobody had ever been prosecuted for these two things. And um, so it, he's made legal history twice mm. in a bad way. It was actually, I actually wrote a story about them in the first ever story in 2010. Um, they weren't named at the time. I wrote a story about how two brothers had taken over the Galway, the criminal underworld in Galway. Right. Um, you know, it was, because we don't normally do a lot of gangland stories in Galway. I was actually told, go and find a gangland story in Galway. Right. We haven't found anything in there in ages. And I wrote a story about these two brothers who had risen to the top and how they were involved in armed robberies. They were, again, using armed robberies to fund a lot of the drug purchases. Mm. So I didn't know it at the time, but that was coincided with when they were being bugged. Right. So you heard even in court, they were reading the Sunday World out to each other, yeah. getting paranoid about oh, right. it. Yeah, yes, that was actually really? formed part of the evidence. My article. Now they weren't named, but they were referred to. It was obvious yeah, yeah. to them, at least. And like, was. I, I mean, how big are they? Because, like, when you see where Michael O'Loughlin is now, and I think 
it was put to and accepted by the court. Like he doesn't really have the lifestyle. He doesn't seem to have a huge amount no. of assets. He's been in, in jail now for a while. I think he, he, he possibly, his family haven't been able to visit him too much in prison because he's north of the border. He's been in through COVID. Um, he certainly has some, you know, children dependents and... Where's the money? Like, where where well, has this criminal career got him? Well, he was a very significant regional player. Yeah. I mean, the O'Loughlin's at the time that I wrote that article, they were dealing with the Collaby gang in Limerick and also with the Irwins in Sligo. Mm. So they were, they were, Galway has... Sandwiched between those two. Sandwiched between them, working with them and making quite a lot of money. Mm. Um, but, you know, they weren't on the scale of, you know, Daniel Kinnan, obviously. And in fact, about the O'Loughlin's, it was said that they had lost a lot of money on property in the crash because as they as they were, you know, convicted or, or arrested, the, the crash occurred and they had made some money, but that they'd invested. I think there was even talk of an orchard in Eastern Europe or somewhere that, that was that they were meant to have bought. But really you're looking at people that were living a very comfortable, you know, extravagant enough lifestyle, but regional drug dealers, yeah. regional players. Yeah. Um, and Mike supporting probably quite a, a, yeah, a, I mean, a large I, I, amount of people working for them. Yeah. Well, you heard in court at the time they had 20 people working for them and they were involved not just in... like a similar scale to Barry... Well, Barry, it's uh, Barry Young, but Barry probably Young's maybe a bit, a bit less national. Yeah. But absolutely, these are big drug gangs that are very, in, you know, very much control the area. Um, they were also involved in in burglaries, um, uh -huh. in armed robberies and facilitating those for other gang members. Um, they were involved in the drugs trade in general. And then when they did go to prison, they were housed in Castle Ray. And even within the prison structure, Michael O'Loughlin became a very serious player, you know. Mm. So the, 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 his importance as a criminal on the outside was reflected on the inside he became one of the leading figures in that in that prison system. Obviously, then when he came out, he seems to have ended up in the north. Um, the, the contacts, the, the some of the people that he would have been dealing with, um, continue to have a big influence up the north. For example, people from Sligo criminals like Barry Young. Who, yeah, up around Donegal and into the Derry area. Yeah. Um, is certainly where his sort of contacts are and connections are. Yeah, and he was obviously, Barry Young was working with the Mr. Big Network who were particularly big in the in the border areas in the Newry, places like Newry and they, you know, have ex-gang members there who are also facing very serious charges mm. who were born and bred in Dublin. So that those that kind of that's a broader network that that really made seem to make a lot of money. Obviously you hear Michael O'Loughlin, he's pled guilty, the state don't necessarily make a case, they accept the plea. You hear the mitigation given by by his solicitor um, and by Michael O'Loughlin in, in himself, who he said he he basically um, he's disassociated from from criminality. That he was kind of left on his own, wasn't it? He, he sort of spoke about being abandoned by his criminal associates because he, of his guilty plea. Is sort of like he's broken a murder, is what he was saying. Well, kind of, and that he is, you know, that he he's put he wants to put the matter behind him. He was discarded. They took everything, is what he said about his former criminal associates um, and that... They left him, they hung him out to dry and he's he's left. He's been doing some courses in prison and... He's been doing courses in promised prison. Promised the judge he will continue on that path in life. Yeah, and maybe maybe he will. I mean, it's certainly his, his criminal enterprises, while they might have brought him uh, you know, a moment of glory. They've been they've been quite fleeting, yeah, haven't they? It's a different way he's approached this Encrochat case by the guilty plea than the one with the gangland legislation when it was the membership of an illegal organization because um then that trial went on for a long time it did the, the O'Loughlin because obviously you know this was the first time this legislation has been used so it was going to be challenged and and you know um in it there was a guard a question I just found a little piece here yeah. I thought you might be interested in this or maybe the listeners um there was a guard a Sean Durkin yeah. and he was asked by the prosecuting counsel during that trial uh, which related to offences between February 10th and June 1st of 2010 to explain the meaning of the, these various slang words that the jury were going to hear during the surveillance uh, recordings of the accused. So the words they used to describe cocaine the O'Loughlin brothers were chalk, 
Charlie white snow powder line and white paint. Yeah. And he said that there were also slang words used for the various weights, including key or box for a kilo, an Uzi for an ounce, uh, a Q for a quarter and a Henry for an eighth of an ounce. And <laughs> that's related to Henry the eighth, right? Yeah. Green is cannabis, as we know, grass or pollen. Steel is a firearm. Chat is an object. Juice is 200 euro. Monkey is 100 euro, he added. And under cross-examination by Defence Counsel Martin Giblin SC, the guard was asked if he watched too much American television. <laughs> and he said, no, I do not. He said, he asked him, did you watch The Sopranos or films like The Godfather? Are you a fan of those? And Garda Durkin said he was a fan, but he hadn't watched too much because his parents were very strict. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure that was quite an amusing exchange I mean, during that court case. But It was a great court case at the time. Time. And it was really curious that after that, mm. you would have thought there was going to be a rake of these. And I know criminals really changed their behaviours after yeah. this court case in regard to talking in cars in particular. Yeah. And then there was nothing for a long time. Um, no, but like, if you look at that, I mean, back then, that was when 2012, you're talking 2012, about it, okay? yeah, were, And a very long case. That was before a jury. Yeah. Like, if, if that was taken now, it would be before the Special Criminal yeah. Court. Yeah. So it would be more based on the legal matters yeah. and the evidence at heart, you wouldn't have that sort of, uh, you know, what a jury. Yeah, hearing all that stuff. is a jury hearing all that sort of stuff. And I suppose maybe, you know, the reason they go before the Special Criminal Court is because of possible jury intimidation, etc. But yeah, that case, while it was successful, they only got a membership. Yeah of an or a criminal organization. Yeah. They didn't get that director charge, which no. was the bigger one. And yeah, there seemed to be this um problem. Certainly what I was told in the aftermath of it and in recent years, until they did start using it again, was that criminal organizations were very fluid. They were changing yeah. all the time and they couldn't establish them as a thing. Yeah. You know, sort of yeah, like they're obviously not like the IRA. They're not like I mean, the IRA, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so, I mean, guards used to go and give evidence of the IRA that this guy was the quartermaster for this brigade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the IRA were a structured organisation. People were sworn in. Obviously, the mafia in, in the US is a very structured organisation. Most criminal gangs in, in Ireland are not. They're, they, you know, we spoke about it and it was the evidence was given of, I think, 20 people working for the O'Loughlin's. But those guys are off doing their own thing exactly. as well. They're you, know. Of, you know, the work of the a job to be done, but they're yeah. not exactly. It was, I think Gardy felt it was going to be very difficult for them to prove that this gang as a thing existed. Yeah. And, but then I think um, they just seem to have succeeded they of have. late and they're using the legislation in the same way that for years, the Special Detective Unit used it against the terrorist organisations and were often very successful uh, over the years. I mean, the terrorist related offences going in through the Special Criminal Court are hardly existent at the moment. No. Um, but there was a time that that's what was going through the special criminal courts. And what they were doing was identifying, you know, individuals as members of an illegal organisation. They might have been getting them three or four years, yep. either on a guilty plea or after trial. But they were breaking up those cells that yep. had developed and even a break of three years while, you know, such and such is in prison or whatever can actually make yeah. them powerless. Yeah. I think like it was very unusual actually what happened over those years that 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 they seemed to drop off. Um, I don't know if that was a particular policy, but certainly that that legislation came absolutely back into fashion. Well, you see, maybe it failed after this. Maybe there was a couple of but cases there was, that were there taken and they didn't. Possibly so. I mean, there were other cases taken, I have to say, mm. where, where there was both conversation. I remember one of a, a gang in, in, in the Tala area. There was other... Uh, there was a foreign Nigerian criminal involved with in major uh, importation of cocaine where there was, you know, video and, and recordings used. But definitely... And they didn't result in a conviction? No, they did result they in a did. conviction. Yeah. But, you know, look, it, 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 this is the way, uh, you know, who knows exactly why. Yeah. Or But certainly um, uh, those techniques that were first introduced in this case are definitely back in fashion, let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. And poor, uh, well, let's not say well, poor not old poor Michael, Michael O'Loughlin, but, in, but you know, he, he, you become a superstar once and then you become a superstar the second time. Yeah, he made, he's made the history I books. I think he's kind of maybe, would he have proved that maybe the, the, the life of crime isn't for him? No. Well, look, it <laughs> certainly doesn't seem to be. Um, um, and I suppose he's getting to that age where um, maybe another few years in prison Definitely doesn't seem attractive. I mean, they're big, imposing guys, him and his brother, Eddie. Are they? They're six foot four. Right. Um, they were 
certainly had a lot of fear around Galway, which has been a, a city that's, you know, a, avoided a lot of the 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 high level violence that we've seen in mm. other in other parts of Ireland. Um and they were very, very feared at the time. Mm. Um so you interesting know. to kind of untangle, you know, why he was in the north, yeah. who he was dealing with, why he had that's a big transition to leave, to move, to live it is north of the border and continue that operation. Why he did that and, you yeah. know, um maybe we will dig a little bit deeper into all of that. Yes, we'll come back and talk it. about it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent, and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs, and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.